Hey, we're Ginger and Jeremy Volo, and this is the Hope We Hold podcast. Where we have weekly conversations around our family table to share the hope of Jesus. So welcome to the first episode of the Hope We Hold podcast. This is something um, that Jared and I have been wanting to do for a long time, and so we're very excited to get started. Yeah, we have a passion uh, for sharing the hope that we hold in Jesus Christ with others, uh, with all of you, with those in our lives. And that's how our desire on this platform, really it's our desire for our entire lives, isn't it? Um, That's what we want to talk about today on Mm -hmm. this first episode of the podcast. Uh, But first, let me just say, we're excited to hear from all of you. If you have any questions you'd like us to discuss on future episodes, uh, we'd love to hear that. We'd also really love to hear um, your stories of hope, how you've found hope in Christ and anything you'd like to share, uh, we would love to hear from you guys. So uh, feel free to send them in to contact at hopewehold.com. Yeah, we'd love that. And we just want to know what's on your hearts. And um, so like Jer said, today we want to kick off the podcast with conversation on hope. And why are we calling this the Hope We Hold podcast? And what is hope and how can we keep hope in a life with so many ups and downs. Yeah, for us, it really begins uh, with a verse in Scripture that the Apostle Peter wrote. Um, Ginger and I have talked a lot about this verse over the last several years, mm-hmm. um, not only as Christians, but but Christians specifically living in um, sort of a social media age. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the world has, has changed in the last 10 years, and much of uh, people's lives are lived out online in many respects. And that's a beautiful thing because uh, so many relationships can be formed through that and you get to know the world and people Mm -hmm. that you would have never known before. Um, But one of the dimensions of that for Ginger and I have been, uh, or the conversation for us has been, how do we, um, how do we handle that, that kind of uh, platform or outlet? And the verse from the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 3.15 has been so helpful for us and we trust it'll be helpful for you guys as well. But in 1 Peter 3.15, the Apostle Peter writes these words. He says, In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. And so Peter really gives us a basis for living life as a Christian in any culture. Um, And in this short little verse, what Ginger and I have seen is that Peter is giving us the motivation, the mission, and the method. So the first thing he says is, in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. That's our motivation, right? We want to honor Jesus Christ as holy. And we want to honor him as who he is. He's Lord. Um, And so we want to submit to him and follow him and joyfully uh, walk in relationship with him. And we want to honor him as holy. Uh, and that there's so much that it's entailed there, but it means, you know, we want to be holy as he is holy. We want to honor him by living pure lives and, mm-hmm. and joy-filled lives, uh, walking with Christ. And so there's our motivation. And that should be, really, it should be the motivation for every Christian, mm-hmm. shouldn't what it? What drives us, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we want to honor Christ. Yeah. Um, and so then he leads from there into mission. So then he says, okay, honor Christ the Lord as holy. And now here's the mission, Christian. Uh, Be ready, always prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. I just love that picture. It's a beautiful picture. You see somebody and they have hope. They have joy. They're living their life and they're not despairing. Uh, They're not, you know, um, just just depressed and and without Mm -hmm. Uh, purpose, Mm -hmm. but but they have a a hope to everyday life. And as Christians, and that's what we're going to discuss today, we do have a hope. And so our mission is to share that hope with the world. And so Peter says, hey guys, when somebody asks you about this hope that's in you, are you you ready to give a reason Mm -hmm. for that hope? Are you ready to share that reason? Um, So that's our mission as Christians. And then he shares the method, really, how are you going to do this? Um, And I I just love this, yet do it with gentleness and respect. 
Mm. We want to be, we want to be people who are kind, who are gentle. Uh, we we have a message to share, uh, but we're not arrogant in sharing that message. We're not bombastic in sharing that message. Uh, we're respectful of others, and we're gentle in in how we're sharing that. Mm, exactly. Yeah. It's it's what we want to do, and also like why we want to do it, and then how we want to do it yeah. we want to talk about so yeah we want to share hope and i guess especially like in a hopeless world you can just see all around i mean you just turn on the news and it's so easy to lose hope so quickly um because we're in a hopeless world we're living in a hopeless world i mean from viruses in the air to violence in our streets i mean you can see it everywhere like we can lose hope and even give in to fear, and that can paralyze us too. Oh, definitely. And you, you, you realize that um, politics isn't a place to put our trust, mm, right? Yeah. Uh, people let us down all the time. Uh, mm. Our money can disappear. Our health is fading. Um, really, where can we put our trust in this world that won't sooner or later mm. let us down? Yeah. And like you said, it's it's a it's a hopeless world. It just takes five minutes of scrolling the the, the internet or turning on the news. Um, so, Ginge, let's begin today um, as we discuss why this podcast, why the name Hope We Hold. Um, let's begin on the ground floor. What is hope? And and actually, let me ask this first. Um, what do you think? most people think about when they hear that word hope? Hmm. Well, I think for a lot of people, like especially the way the word is taking kind of a life of its own, it's more like wishful thinking. Um, like to hope is to cross your, cross your fingers and like hope for the best. Yeah. Um, and it's like the, some people, I guess, may hope that they would win the lottery and I think it's kind of funny too, you know, you see people in these fountains in the middle of the park, they're um, throwing pickle, uh, nick, sorry, nickels and <laughs> pennies and dimes in, and they're just like, um, like throwing them in and hoping that something's going to happen. They're hoping that their wishes are going to come true or, you know, they're going to meet their future spouse next week or something like that. But it's a, it's a warped view of hope. It's, it's not um, what the Bible says about hope. And I think that's a pretty common misunderstanding that people have. Yeah, so exactly. It's like many, for many, hope is is merely defined as a wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. It's a dream yeah. Yeah. or a chance. Like you said, throwing that nickel or the pickle mm -hmm. into the into the fountain. <laughs> no, I, said nickel. I was like, nickel? <laughs> she's, I don't use she's nickels got these, very often. You've got these pregnancy cravings. I know, and right? one of them is pickles. <laughs> jars of that so that's what's on my mind these days he's dreaming of people throwing pickles <laughs> i don't the use nickels very often so <laughs> i'm gonna start calling him pickles i think right. that's a good name but but that's it isn't it it's like that hopeless romantic who's yes. tossing the penny and hoping it will bring bring them love exactly yeah so we need to really begin with a redefinition hope redefined yeah because the hope that christians have is not wishful thinking um, our hope is rock solid confidence in the person of Jesus Christ, that he is who he says he is and that his promises are true. So when God speaks, we don't have to cross our fingers and hope that something's going to happen. Yeah, that's that's Hebrews 11, 1, which says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Mm. So faith or trust, you could say, or belief is the assurance or the confidence mm. of things hoped for, mm. the conviction of things not seen. Now, think about it for a moment. Our faith is the assurance of what we're hoping in. It's the confidence of what we're hoping in. In other words, we are believing in certain realities, what is called our hope. So let me give you an example. The, the Christian is believing in the hope of heaven. Now you say, well, how is that not wishful thinking? Aren't you just crossing your fingers, wishing heaven is true? Mm -hmm. And this is where we need to understand that the essential nature of hope is, is revealed in Scripture as the reason we believe in heaven is because of the one who's promised mm -hmm. heaven. Yeah. 
So, so we hear the words of Jesus in John 14, where he's speaking to his disciples and he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And then he says this, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Mm. So there in John 14, Jesus gives a promise of heaven to his disciples. It's a promise to hope in. Mm. And so you say, well, what's the basis of their hoping? They've just received that promise of a future glory. And what's the basis of hoping in that promise? Well, it's, it's, the person who gave you that promise, mm-hmm. right? Right. How, how are you going to have confidence in the promise if you don't have confidence in the person? Mm, yeah. So, for example, imagine, babe, if I told you uh, that I was going to take you out for a romantic night on the town, we'd go to your favorite restaurant, um, that would probably get your hopes up, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and so you say, oh, great, I'm looking forward to this evening. Uh, we're going to hang out. Um, you know, I'm going to get a babysitter and and we'll be off on the town and have a good night. Um, you'd hope in that. But but it, th- imagine the scenario where if I was an untrustworthy person, I never kept my promises. Mm-hmm. I was always late. Every time I said, you know, I'll be home at five, I'll have a babysitter for us, you know, for Lissy and, and uh, we'll be out by 530. If I'm never keeping my word, if mm-hmm. I'm always late, if I always talk, 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 but never do, you might think, well, yeah, okay, bud, like, let's see. You know, you <laughs> yeah. always say that, mm. but let's see. Um, you, you have no reason to have confidence in what I say because of how I act, right? Mm. I think we all can relate to that to some degree. We want to put our hope in the words of people, but because of their character, we really don't have any confidence in what they say. Mm. So this is biblical hope. As God gives promises in the Bible, why is our hope not wishful thinking? Mm. Because the character and nature and person of the one making the promises is so trustworthy. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, just thinking about the character of God and he is kind and faithful. I mean, one of his defining character qualities is faithfulness. And that's something I think we've seen time and time again is God's faithfulness through everything that we've walked through in our lives. And he is righteous and sovereign and he is good. And over and over, we'll see that, you know, that um, what he says that he will do. Yeah, it's Romans 3, 4. Let God be true, though everyone else were a liar. Mm, yeah, so our hope, it's it's founded in the person and the promises of God and it's not based on the circumstances of our lives, which I think you know, they're always changing. And so that's something that we can have confidence in that God never changes. And so our hope is a confident one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, Ginger, as we've, you know, taken on this podcast, we want this to be relevant. We want this mm-hmm. to be helpful um, to people. And so we think, well, how is this relevant? So, so let's bring this down to everyday living. Mm-hmm. Um, here's an illustration that you may find helpful. Um, imagine if if you've uh, just received a, a health diagnosis, which is a dire one. Um, I know many of you guys listening can relate. Uh, Ginger and I have loved ones who uh, are in this position where you you receive, for instance, the the cancer diagnosis, mm, yeah. and the doctor says you've got six months. Now, for for many people, that's the most hopeless thing you can hear, mm-hmm. because. What you're hearing is there's nothing you can do to stop the inevitable, that, that this, this death is coming. And so it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. It doesn't matter who you know, what your friends are, what car you drive. You've got six months, the doctor just told you. It's a hopeless situation. Mm. Um, if you don't have your hope settled, on the person and promises of God. If your hope is in this world, the things you have, the, the person you are, the way you feel, then a diagnosis like that leaves you utterly hopeless. Mm. But for the Christian, here's where this becomes so practical and so relevant. The Christian is looking to life beyond this life. Mm. 
The Christian is is like Jesus said, don't store up treasure on earth where uh, moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, but but store up for yourself treasure in heaven Mm. where where you'll dwell in eternity. Nothing can take that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think of the the beautiful promise of of the Apostle Peter again in 1 Peter 1 where he says, we have this inheritance kept Mm. for you in heaven, imperishable, undefiled. It's reserved for you. And so now imagine you've got that hope, the hope of heaven, the hope of glory beyond this life, and then you get the cancer diagnosis. Mm. Now all of a sudden, it's still still a a sad situation. Um, It's still not something we want to walk through because of the joy we have in this life and, and those we love. But we don't have to be hopeless in that situation. Um, and so even though we're helpless in that diagnosis, we're not hopeless. We've got the hope of glory. And so uh, we can look and say, well, well, death then just becomes a gateway to communion and fellowship with my Savior. Mm-hmm. I've really been helped by these words of the Apostle Paul. Listen to this. This is 2 Corinthians 4, beginning of verse 16. He says, we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting our way, uh, away, he's talking about his body. Mm. Our inner self is being renewed day by day for this light momentary affliction, whatever that affliction mm. is, is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are unseen or, I'm sorry, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And so for a Christian with this hope, now even death, the ultimate enemy, is no longer seen as hopeless, but the great transition from this temporary life to the eternal joys of heaven. Mm, That's so good. Yeah. And it's this hope that we want to share with you, hope for everyday living and we really want to explore these topics you know how does this hope transform parenting and how does this hope motivate our marriages and how does this hope drive us through the difficult days and terrifying trials that we all face like miscarriage um, broken relationships um, health yeah all those things that we will face it's not a matter of if but when and so I think that's what we want to cover on this podcast. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's how, is, how is this hope really a buoy for the soul? Mm. I love that picture of, of the buoy because the buoy, as it's, it's floating on the water, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of a, of a torrential downpour and a hurricane. That, that buoy might pop underwater for a second, but it's coming right back to the surface. It might be a cool breezy, sunny day with peaceful, serene waters and the buoys floating on the surface. Mm. And it's a picture of the hope that the Christian has in Jesus. Mm. No matter the circumstances in your life, no matter the, the storms raging around you, the winds howling, the rains falling, you can be floating. You can be, be um, steadfast and, and secure uh, not drowning uh, through the midst of it because you have this this rock steady, uh, immovable hope. And, and let me just say this: this hope really begins with the gospel. Um, we need to understand the gospel of Jesus that we are all in a hopeless situation because of our sin, and yet in the midst of that, Jesus Christ brings us the hope of salvation, that we can actually be rescued from our sin condition, that we can be rescued from the the guilt, the oppression, and the judgment that that sin brings, and brought into new life of fellowship and restored relationship with our Creator. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's through the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to this earth. He lived the life that we couldn't live. He died the death that we deserve to die, and he rose from the grave, conquering the enemy that we could not conquer, death itself, so that for all those who repent of their sin and put their faith in him, uh, we can be united with our Savior, and we can live triumphantly with hope. Mm, That's so good. 
yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited um, to have this opportunity to open our hearts with all of you, our listeners. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so it'll be good to have these conversations, but then also we want to hear from you, our listeners, um, and not only your questions, but also um, how you have found hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah, so thanks for joining us today uh, for the Hope We Hold podcast. We trust that you were encouraged. And it is our hope that your hope would be in Christ alone.